I can appreciate you creating this show. So when we got rid of them, we also got rid of the us that allowed them. Because somebody's going to hell. So we are here today with this episode of Bacon Bitch Productions that I could not wait to do. <laughs> We have Nikki Jazzy Sweets, okay? This <laughs> is the viral uh, compilation queen. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> because it's the way that you put things together with all the different desserts. You've done the macaroni and cheese, sweet potato pie, absolutely mm-hmm. brilliant. <laughs> the red velvet sweet potato pie. Mm. And my favorite one that that I haven't tried, but I can't wait because it combines two of my favorite things, is the key lime cake and the sweet potato pie. I have to to make one for you. Oh my God. The minute I saw it, I was like, how did she think (laughs) of this? Man. So... With this, I love sweet potato pie. You know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that, because I make so many different desserts, mm-hmm. like I cater with, um, I have a few different chefs that I work with, mm-hmm. and so you know, they the assortment allows me to try different things together. And I literally had a mini uh, key lime cupcake mm-hmm. and a mini sweet potato pie and ate them together. And I was like, I'm put. I literally, yeah, that's it. There was like nothing like. Genius or anything I like that. I just that. like, I wonder how these two would taste and just ate them together and it was amazing. So, what is your thought process for the other, for your other creations? Like the, the macaroni and cheese with the sweet potato pie. Like, what, how did you come up with that? So, it was, it was in 2020 when I first, you know, wanted mm-hmm. to do it, even though I didn't launch it until 2021. Mm-hmm. Everybody was putting together, um, macaroni and cheese and yams mm-hmm. and like in egg rolls. It mm-hmm. was, you know, they were just throwing it together. And I was like, I wonder how this will taste mm-hmm. in a pie. I, I've been wanting to do it. I wanted to do it in 2020. Mm-hmm. I love it. Like I, I, like I said in my videos, I can eat my sweet potato pie with my food. Mm-hmm. I, it's my favorite mm-hmm. pie. You know, I love it together. I sit it right next to my macaroni mm-hmm. and cheese. You know, and I go, I go to town. Uh-huh. So you know, it was just, it was a no brainer for me. I was like, I just I love that. I know I'm gonna do it. I just mm-hmm. gotta figure out the logistics of it. So once mm-hmm. I figure out the logistics of it, is you know, the it's rest history is, after yes, that. The rest is history. I saw it on a shade room, and I was like, what the? Wait, what? A I tussled so bad with putting it out. To <laughs> for real? Yes. Why? Because it was just so. It was, I knew, they're like, it's two favorites in mm-hmm. in our community, mm-hmm. you know? And it's it's like, I knew people were going to, like, give me slack about it. Mm-hmm. I knew it. Mm-hmm. I knew people were going to, you know, <laughs> I knew they were going to give me grief about it. And so I, was, I tussled with it, you know? But something in me was just like, just do it. <laughs> I'm so happy you did. Oh, me too. I mean, immediately. Mm-hmm. Immediately, it had so many shares. Mm-hmm. It went viral. Like it did. It did. It was crazy. A crazy year. <laughs> I loved. And before that, you did the red velvet. With yes, the, but that's not my original one. I don't know who came up with that. Oh, for real. But um, uh-uh. no, that's not mine. So it was. It's just something that just went viral, just like the buttermilk sweet potato pie, that went viral. And so, um. I just, you know, people tag you in it, and I'm like, I figured out how to do it, you know, to my liking, and it's just, it, it really is one of my staples now. I love, mm-hmm. okay, one, I love that you say, okay, that's not mine. Yeah, I don't know who did, because because let me tell you something, it's always like this thing, and I like not just the baking community, but more so in the baking community that um, we get customers all the time that send mm-hmm. us stuff. Mm-hmm. They don't always include where they where, got it from. Yes. Sometimes it's in like private Facebook groups and they're not supposed to bring it out to the group because the group will actually like, don't take nothing out of the group. Okay. And so they'll screenshot a part of it and send you just that part. Like, can you make this? Mm-hmm. And so when we recreate it, 
we don't know. We don't know where. Where like, it, I looked high and low <laughs> for whoever made the buttermilk sweet potato pie, and I was like, I don't know. But I also put in my yep. caption. If it's you, I let saw me know, that. Mm-hmm. I will tag you. You know, because recently, um, my the macaroni and cheese sweet potato pie it went viral again, mm-hmm. but another creator. So of course, all of my followers are tagging me, and they're like, "Oh, she's right. got the idea." Mm-hmm. And she literally said the same thing. She was just like, "You know, one of her customers sent it to her, and she, oh, okay, I want to, re- I want to recreate it." You know, she did give me. Um, she did give me my accolades and I, and I, and I respect that because it does, it happens all, all the time, time. you know, yeah. something goes viral and you're like, I, Hey, I want to jump on this trend cause it's right. Trending. Right. You know, but I do appreciate people who, so many people have recreated, you know, a lot of my desserts and they tag me in it. And, you know, I really do appreciate that because, you know, what happens is. Larger creators will share, will recreate your work, mm-hmm. and if they don't say anything, the creator, and this mm-hmm. happens like across the board All in the general, time. you know, especially now in social media, you know, and the real creator does not get the credit. The credit you know, yeah. it's like, man. All you have to do is just say your followers are already going to support you. Yeah. No matter what. Yep. No matter just, what. You know, if you if you know who it is, get that person credit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you could help them a little bit. Exactly. And so, it takes nothing away from you, what you have done. Your clientele is your clientele. Your followers are going to support you regardless. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. Okay. I think it's I think it's like important, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes to give that credit. However. You know, I have done um, cakes, like birthday cakes, where people have sent me a design and said, yes. can you do this? So in some instances, it's hard to say where well, this design came yes. from. Yes. It's just, you know, somebody gave you an idea, can you do this? Mm-hmm. But sometimes I'm pulling a design from here, a design from there, and putting it, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. together. Same. But, like, I think it is important that when we know or when we have seen stuff go viral to say, as inspired by. Yes. If you know, then that's one thing. Mm-hmm. If you don't know, then you just don't know. Yeah, you know? right. Nine times out of ten, if the person wants, they'll pull up in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They will, yeah. So, yep. They most certainly will. Uh-huh. It, but like the funny thing is too is that where there's one idea, oftentimes that same idea is floating yeah. across. The world with somebody Absolutely. else. To my, you know, to mm-hmm. it can be done. You know, yeah. God inspires, can inspire a bunch of us to do mm-hmm. the same thing. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So your um your experience because you've been doing this nine years, right? In the baking community, what has been your experience like? Even with getting started out, are you self taught or did you go to culinary arts school? How did that? I am completely self-taught. I started. I love that. <laughs> oh, I love I that. I started this business because I love dessert. Mm-hmm. That you know, I used to when I was little. You know, Rice Krispie treats. My grandmother, well, my stepmom's mom. She's my grandmother. Um, she would. She was a neighborhood candy lady, and mm-hmm. she would make you know homemade Rice Krispie treats. Yeah, sell them. Shout out I, to all the she, neighborhood candy okay. ladies. I, she showed me how easy it was. I started doing it too. And mm-hmm. so, you know, my friends in uh, middle school, high school would always be like, Nikki, you know, that was my thing, rice mm-hmm. and trees. And then um, I stumbled across a banana pudding recipe mm-hmm. and I started making that for my friends. Mm-hmm. And it would just, you know, happen around the holidays or maybe like for a birthday or something mm-hmm. like that. But yeah, self, self-talk. I started this company with just a banana pudding recipe that I was, I decided to just create my, like I wanted my customers to create their own banana pudding cups. Like I didn't, you know, I grew up on banana pudding that mm-hmm. was just slapped in a cup. Mm-hmm. You know, it mm-hmm. wasn't really too appeasing to the eye exactly. or whatever. I was like, no, I want it to kind of look like a cheat, like a parfait. You mm-hmm. know? And if the customers don't want to put bananas in there, then they don't have to. Have to, exactly. If they want to trade the vanilla wafers out for Oreos, they can do that too. Right. If they want to put, you know, red velvet cake in there, they can do that too. And and that's really how I got started. And then along the way, you know, customers will say, hey, 
well, if you can do that, can you make me cupcakes, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. or carrot cake? Mm -hmm. Never. I had never baked any of that. Pound cake. Mm -hmm. One of my baking friends taught me how to make pound cake. Oh, yeah. So you did have. Like friends that were able Along to the way. that were able yes. to help you, but I had yeah. to start first. You had to start first. Yes. Let me tell you what I love so much about you being self taught because I'm self taught. I eventually went to culinary art school, but I went to culinary art school because I kept getting a lot of crap from people who had already retained culinary arts degrees. Mm-hmm. And so when I would enter in baking competitions, like I literally had a my very first baking competition, there were Pastry chefs, like everybody who was in the competition. And they down on you, I know. They do. This woman walked away they from $500 dollars to not you. shake my <laughs> hand because she went to school and I had not. And when they were giving the money and the prize, it was like, hey, we got to do a photo out. We need you to shake hands. She was the second place. They had a first, second, and third. And I was first. And it was like, we need you to shake her hand and we're going to do a photo out. She refused. And they told her, well, if you don't do it, then you're going to forfeit your 500. This woman forfeited her 500 to not shake hands with me. And I was like, well, can I have her part? Okay. It, was a, it was like, well, no, now we're going to change the okay. third place <laughs> over the second and then move another person. So she turned out to be somebody else's blessing because now mm-hmm. there was another third place and mm-hmm. the second place was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, and it wasn't just her, but it was just something that I decided to do for myself yes, Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to lie, when I finished cul- culinary art school, I thought that having finished would make me feel official, but I felt cheated. Really? Because you already had it. I already had and it. You did it. Yeah, and I felt like I cheated it. myself. I mm-hmm. felt like I kind of diminished the the brand, like everything that I had built for myself because I'm not going to get a school credit. <laughs> Y'all ain't teach me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I wish I could say that I learned more or learn other things, I didn't. Um, that's your purpose. It's yeah. already within you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. already within. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say, I don't, you know, shun school or anything, mm-hmm. or, you know, but some people just have it. I you know, absolutely and, agree. And, and they really can't be taught by anybody. I believe so. Talent some people is not taught. Are, yeah. Some people... They just have it, yeah, and they can't be taught. It, it, you know, absolutely. When they, when they, you know, go to other people, you know, to be taught, it's like, like you say, it's like you're cheating yourself. Mm-hmm. I feel that way because even in school, you're being taught by somebody else who was taught, and so they're teaching you one way. Mm-hmm. You're learning things strictly by the book. They're there's no passion. Passion can't be taught. There's like, there's no real love. Like I think soul food is in all food, even desserts, because it's the soul of the creator mm-hmm. that is in mm-hmm. it. The DNA that you possess, like everything that God gets, like that's what's in there. Mm-hmm. The book don't the book don't have that. And I say that all the time because like, even when you give birth, right? Mm-hmm. People would, they would, the doctors would tell you, the baby is only supposed to have 2.17 ounces. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, don't get this baby more than 1.3 uh-huh. ounces every four hours. Who baby you feeding? Right. Because my baby crying. Oh, the baby might have colic. No, the baby don't have colic. My baby is hungry. He going to okay. take all these eight ounces and then he going to sleep. <laughs> okay. okay. And I'm going to put this cereal in his bottle at two weeks old. And you're not going to tell me I'm wrong because he going to sleep and I'm going to sleep. Mm-hmm. So it's like, when the last time were you a baby? Do you remember when you was hungry at two months old? No, you don't remember. Mm-hmm. So to me, you're going by the book. Mm-hmm. You're skipping some mm-hmm. stuff. You're skipping where the soul goes, mm-hmm. where the feeling is, where the love is. And the book have don't have that. You. They Mm -hmm. have to break you um, to make you, you know, go down, you know, their their route. Yeah, you know, they have to break you. Like they do to discipline you to. Oh, don't do that. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. When you are, Mm -mm. they do. They tell you when you come in, forget everything Mm -hmm. that you know. Yes. Wipe your mind yeah. clear and let's start from here. Mm-hmm. And I always used to feel like it was that episode of SpongeBob when they told SpongeBob, all you know is fine dining and waiting. <laughs> and SpongeBob forgot his name. He forgot his address. And all he did was fine dining and waiting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I always think about that. And it's, it, it felt like a brainwash mm-hmm. in a sense. Because that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You already, some people, you know, there are people who, 
who need that structure? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, you, you, I think we all need mentors. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Look up to, you know, whether or not they really know that you're their mentor, but Mm -hmm. somebody that you can like, you know, look up to Mm -hmm. and kind of like, you know, follow their lead or whatever. Right. I believe in that, but on this journey, the nine years that I've been doing this, everything that I've needed is was within me. I just didn't know. I, no, I've yeah. always been a very timid, mm-hmm. introverted girl, very shy, mm-hmm. you know, and I just learned along the way, like, girl, you are, you are everything. You have everything you need within you. Absolutely. I my, love that. My, my grandmother, you know, she is gone on one of my grandmothers, but she used to always say to me, like, you don't know who you are. Cause I was like, so I might hold my hand mm-hmm. down and not, you know, really poke my chest out and be mm-hmm. confident. Mm-hmm. She would always tell me that. You find your way, you know, especially like when you tap into your passion. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You find who you are. You have to. Absolutely. You find Absolutely. who you are along the way. And that's what this. This ha- this business has done for me. You know, it's a it has been is it has been a faith walk for me. Um, man, I'm telling I you, love that. a faith walk for me. And like you said, that passion because not all the time will you make the money. Mm-hmm. You know that you're 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 deserved. You know yeah. all the hours that you put in, the blood, sweat, and the tears. <laughs> You know, people just see people just see you know a cupcake or a cake. Oh my! God. You know they don't understand. Like man, I, like even now, like I started doing voiceovers two mm-hmm. years ago. You don't. You just hear a two a one minute to two minute video. You don't know. I I recorded this thirty times. Exactly. Like people don't see that process. Absolutely. And the passion is the only thing you know that fuels that. Or Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? That the passion is what. You know, gives you that motivation to keep going because you you can't get paid for that. Yeah. Oh my God. And let me tell you <laughs> something because we we definitely got to touch on that right there. Mm-hmm. So, have you faced um, issues when it comes to how you price your desserts? Right. Okay. Before we get into that, let me ask you this question: um, When you bake, mm-hmm. are you a scratch baker or are you a Doctor, you like you. Some people doctor so, up the. I'm mostly scratch. Mm-hmm. Now I, there are certain things, and I share I share some of it in my videos. Mm-hmm. There are some things that I use um, box with, mm-hmm. um, but it's not like the main stuff mm-hmm. or whatever. But yeah, I can do. I do both. Okay, mm-hmm. so this is my point because you know it's like an age old. The yeah, bake oh yeah. in the in the in the baking the community, cake. like yeah, box versus scratch, right? Yes. So, I I'm I'm big on scratch. Mm-hmm. I'm big on scratch because I'm also big on science. Like I just yes. I love mm-hmm. the science of everything. That was my best subject mm-hmm. in school. It was always science. Also, the creativity of like making certain things. Also, I don't I don't be liking the, the store prices. I don't like what people be charging for their stuff. So I'm like, I'm fine with making my own. Sometimes making my own make it a little bit more expensive. So uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go here to the store. But um, mm-hmm. but for the most part, like I like that. But I feel like when it comes to our products, right? I've heard people go back and forth with, oh, scratch is better than this, oh, box is the same. I think it's all different. I think whether you do a package, even though, you know, I am pro scratch, I but I think that it's all DNA. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. I feel like you can pick up anything from the box and once you put your touch in, it's still not going to taste the same as whoever made it before. I, I'll it's, be honest. I've tasted people's scratch and it's not good. It. It's not. So, it's you not. know, I think I mean, to each his own. I do think that is to each his own. I also think that um, because my 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 next point was when it comes to pricing. Mm-hmm. This is something I don't care whether it's scratch made, box made, whatever. People think that box means it wasn't cheaper. the same amount of work, right? Oh. Or that it's cheaper, and that's not. That's no. absolutely not it. Did what? you love the product? Mm-hmm. What you got was was the product great? Because what people don't understand is 
It's not like we're in the Jetsons age where you open up a box and then the cake, whole cake going right. popped out, pop out, frosted, ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, there's still some work that yeah, went behind it. There's Yes. I there's still ingredients. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I believe that. The, I, I'm with you. I believe mm-hmm. certain things should be bought, should, mm-hmm. should be scratched, mm-hmm. you know. But I also am like, to each his own. Like, mm-hmm. if you can make it taste good and your mm-hmm. customers like it, yep, go off. You know, exactly. do it. Because now, I don't like all, you know, all, I don't, you know, all box cakes are not created this, you know, like, I'm, listen, don't get nervous. Let me tell you something. I'm ghetto as hell. <laughs> and listen, I, I've been feeding off your spirit the whole time you've been here. I've been like, she's so calm <laughs> and she's so peaceful. And I just was drawing like this whole like peaceful vibe. But I'm a, I'm a nigga and I'm like real ghetto, right? Be so I'm the I'm kind of friend that me and you would make good friends because you would I'm know how to come. You yeah, you're going to balance me out. And I'm, I, I, I am I, that friend. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make you rough around the edges and you... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so say how you feel, because bitch, I got your bag. So, <laughs> like, so a chocolate or a red velvet boss cake. I mean, people use them, but I don't really like them. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with I, you. you. Know, I don't like them. Yeah. But um, but that's just me. Mm-hmm. But you know, in you know, in the defense of the boss cake, when people start talking about pricing, what's in a boss cake? Flour, mm-hmm. uh, sugar, mm-hmm. baking soda, salt, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's all that's the real money is in mm-hmm. the eggs, the oil, the butter, the you know, the, the mixing cream. technique. Make sure you, you make put, it rubbery. If you, take, mm-hmm. if you take everything that's in a box cake mm-hmm. and calculate it like separately, mm-hmm. it's really that not that much different. It's, yeah, difference no, it's in not. Price. So not. when you start, when people start saying, you know, when people say, oh, you know, it should be cheaper because they use a boss cake. Why? It's, a boss cake is literally just flour and mm-hmm. sugar. It's just already prepared for the person. Mm-hmm. You know, it just makes it a little bit easier for them. You know, they, people saying? really think that because you opened up the box, the whole cake just was yeah, there. No, they still and, have to make it. Yeah. Like you have to, you still have to buy all of the, mm-hmm. the most expensive stuff is not in that box. Absolutely. It's not. And and it takes you six hours. If you're doing mm-hmm. a custom cake, that's six hours from start to finish. At least. Absolutely. That's five to six hours. Mm-hmm. No. You know, so to each his own, if it works for you, work it, honey. Yeah, I believe in that so strongly. So um, I just want to tell y'all, if y'all think that it's supposed to be discounted, because listen, don't you worry about the wrong damn thing. You just worrying about the wrong thing. Worry about the product that you actually got. Did you like the product? Did you like it? That's all that matters. Yeah. It don't matter how it came, what it is, did you like it? It don't change the price, okay? Because no matter what anybody else, did, no matter what the brand name of the box is, the DNA that was put in it, from the person that made it is what made it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I believe in that strongly. Have you ever struggled with your pricing, period? Like yeah. on both ends. Like, have you struggled with how you price your stuff and then struggle with how people take your pricing after you've oh, priced absolutely. it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first, you know, like looking back on my books years ago, like I wasn't making money at all, mm-hmm. you know. And one of my men. <laughs> so I felt that struggle. Girl, I tell you, I felt that my girl, pocket fell down I'm a little bit. Money. <laughs> I was making money. It felt like I was making money because it was like, you know, more would come in. You know, you were so, yes. I was so busy. Yes. You know, so money just kept coming in mm-hmm. because I'm so cheap, mm-hmm. you know. And that's another, re- that's another thing that I learned along the way. Like, if you're too busy, you probably need to raise your price. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Can you say that one more time? If you're too busy, mm-hmm. then you need to go up. Cause mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. You mm-hmm. need to go up. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah, you yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But one of my mentors is um, she's a chef. She's not a baker, mm-hmm. but um, she taught me like we would. She would do like seminars on how you know your money. Yeah, you know knowing your numbers. And, mm-hmm. and although she would like beat it in our head, I still was like 
I got a lot of money coming in, mm-hmm. you know, not really calculating like, you know, the expenses. Honey, you really ain't making that much. <laughs> you know, it just it just seemed like you are. But she she the cost of business. It's not just what it costs for me to bake this cake. It is the cost for me to run this business. I got lights, I have, you know, taxes. I've got, you know, you've license. got you. Yes. You've got mm-hmm. you. You've got a I'm life. Like I need to come out yes. this price. Because that's you, how I always that's say. That's what she taught us. And, people, you know, I've seen, you know, I've seen people say, oh, it doesn't, um, oh, I've made that kind of cake before and it doesn't, you know, cost all that, you know, or it doesn't take that much money to make this. Yeah. But I have. I have a place to, that I live, you know, and it's not going to be as crazy as somebody who has their own bakery. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know what mm-hmm. their prices are in a bakery, but <clears throat> it is the cost to do business is within, you know, it's in my prices. Now, I'm not going to put my whole rent, you know, mm-hmm. in, in the cake price, but yeah, a little of a little percentage of what it costs for me to run my business is added into all of the desserts. That's just how it is. Let me tell you. I always say that for the statement you make for others, your bank statement needs to match, right? Mm-hmm. And what people don't get is that I if like I that. can't afford, mm-hmm. hmm, if I can't afford a decent lifestyle, I'm not saying I got to be driving a, a, a Bentley or nothing like that, but if I can't afford a comfortable lifestyle to where I'm not scraping and scramping and robbing Peter to pay Paul, mm-hmm. then my love for what I do is going to it's going to leave very quickly. Right. I'm not going to want to continue to do this because it's not, you know, it's not mm-hmm. making sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not taking care of me. So why would I want to keep doing this? Now I'm going to move on to something else. Mm-hmm. But then people will be like, why did you stop doing this? You was That was my favorite this and that. Yeah, but y'all didn't want to pay mm-hmm. for your favorite. You, you, I couldn't afford it. Right. You and know? so when it comes to pricing, people will swear that because it's something you eat and they can't hold it mm-hmm. and they can't cradle it or look at it, mm-hmm. that it's not supposed to cost the price mm-hmm. that they cost. So there was a post that was on Facebook. The girl actually blocked me. I'm, I'm still laughing about it, right? I'll be, I'll be okay. Listen, I do not get emotionally attached to anything on social media. Even when I say stuff and people come at me in the comments, I, I'll be laughing my ass off. I don't get emotionally attached to that stuff. This is entertainment, right? So there was a post going around on Facebook where this girl says, $75 to $85 for a pound cake is absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. And it was like, even if... Um, especially if it's dry, right? So this is my thing for for, for everybody. <laughs> when you're making a pound cake, a pound cake takes way more butter mm-hmm. than a regular cake. Mm-hmm. It takes way more eggs mm-hmm. than a regular cake. And so when you're, and this is just for anything, okay? Whether it's a pound cake or not. But when you're adding the butter, the eggs, and everything to this cake, I, I, I'm a numbers girl, okay? So it costs me about 30 to 40 bucks. It depends on if you are adding this golf or if you want coconut or alcohol or whatever. Mm-hmm. It takes me 30 to 40 bucks to make one cake. Mm-hmm. People want these $40, $45, $50 dollar cakes. Mm-hmm. A pound cake takes an hour and a half mm-hmm. to bake. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm going up. <laughs> right. It takes an hour and a half to bake. And then that, Mix with your mise en place. That's taking all your stuff out, sitting it out. Then you're mixing time. You're mixing it. And then it's in the oven for an hour and a half. The spray the pan, the the, the, the cake board that it got to sit on, a box that it got to be boxed up in. Total time is two hours. If I spend $30 or $35 on making this cake, right? Mm-hmm. And then I sell it to you for $50. Mm-hmm. And it took two hours. Mm-hmm. Do you really want me to be in this kitchen for $7.50 an hour? <laughs> You really think I'm going to be in here and pay myself less than minimum wage? The point of not working for somebody sometimes mm-hmm. is so that you can make the money that you want to make and pursue mm-hmm. your dreams. There's no way I'm going to pay myself less than somebody else would have paid me, okay, to give you a $50 cake. <laughs> so, just so I, just so you can be happy with Absolutely. this cake. And I just spent, 
$7.50 ain't going to cover the amount of electricity that I use to make this cake over that hour and a half. It ain't going to cover the gas that it took me to go to the store to get these things. It don't even cover the damn tax on the flour. So I'm going to pay myself <laughs> $7.50 an hour to give you a $50 cake. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, people will look at the simplicity of the product yeah. once you give it to them. However, whether the process is simple or whether it's not, all if, if it, it could have took me two minutes to make the cake, mm -hmm. but it's all the years and years of experience mm -hmm. that got me to those $2. Now, I'm going to pay myself according to those years and years of experience mm -hmm. because you would not work for a company that is going to not give you a raise over years and years Absolutely. and years. So you That's have to pay to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to pay yourself what you are worth and who For your better expertise. to thank you. And I struggle with that, you know, especially I think a lot of people struggle with it, especially if it's because it's if it's something that you love to do, mm -hmm. it's easy, you know, it's it's gonna be easier to you. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to kind of like come up with a price for something. Mm -hmm. Like it, that's easy for me or mm -hmm. that I love to do. I particularly, do, you know, I did with a pound cake because I'm like, oh, pound cake ain't nothing. I could, you know, with mm -hmm. that up in my sleep, you know. But like I said, the demand for my pound cakes lately, mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to go up. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I, it, and like you say, the expertise, mm -hmm. you know, people got to, people have to pay for that. Absolutely. They have to pay for that. You got yes. to pay to play. You got to pay to put it on the plate. Yes. <laughs> this episode of the Bacon Bitch Productions podcast is brought to you by Nikki Jazzy Sweets. Listen, if you're looking for that unique treat, also like, you know, a little out of the ordinary, but very extraordinary, please hit her up on all platforms. She can be contacted at Nikki Jazzy Sweets. So I feel like one of the things that we struggle with as entrepreneurs is people seeing our worth, right? It's because you're a person. Mm -hmm. But if you were a company, mm -hmm. if you were a big business, big corporation, they, right? They have no problem with paying your your, your price, right? Because Gucci, Louis, none of them. They don't have a problem. They're not even worried about who ain't going to pay their price because in actuality, they only want to give their product to a select few any damn way, right? Okay. They could run the whole damn business off, off. those mm -hmm. select few and still live good. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when it comes to us, most people, okay, uh, I'm going to say the people who are like the nine to fivers. A lot of nine to fivers have a problem with paying entrepreneurs mm -hmm. for certain things, right? Not all y'all, some of y'all, <laughs> because some of them will look at, well, she's charging $150 for this. This is taking three of my work hours or five or eight of my work hours mm -hmm. to give her this, right? Mm -hmm. And then they will swear that every dime mm -hmm. that they have given you has afforded you in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And how dare you drive a certain car or live in a certain neighborhood or have anything, they're going to feel like it all came off of them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes as a people, this is no particular race, but as a people, um, we struggle with genuinely seeing our entrepreneurial sisters and brothers get to a certain point. Absolutely. You know, and they don't want to pay the price mm -hmm. that we're asking, it, which is why I used to love that TikTok or what a lady would say, the price is the price. Okay, because ain't no arguing with you. Yeah. Ain't no going back mm -hmm. and forth with you about what the price is. Mm -hmm. This is just that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, have you struggled ever with increasing? Because everything has gone up, right? Mm -hmm. Groceries, ingredients. Do you struggle with that, with like giving your increased price now? Um, I Yeah. I do. I struggle with it. One, I, and we talked about this, you know, mm -hmm. off camera is because um, I empathize with the customer, mm -hmm. you know, with the, you know, I'm a consumer and I empathize and I'm like, well, you know, mm -hmm. times are hard or whatever. I don't want to do too, too, too much, but it's like, ugh, everything is going up. And then also 
like, you know, as a baker or anybody in the food industry, we have, so, we you, you know, we see products, ingredients change, like, every time we go to the grocery Absolutely. store. Absolutely. And so it's, like, a struggle to, like, like, dang, you know, do I go up every time? Because I, you know... Mm-hmm. I don't feel like it's, it's proper to go up every time, mm-hmm. but it's getting to that point, you know, where like in the food industry, um, where, you know, crap, you know, seafood and, and certain things of that nature are like mm-hmm. seasonal, things are going up like that. Like I remember eggs Absolutely. were so expensive, you Absolutely. know, butter is so expensive. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, with that, like once I've already gone up a little bit, I'm like, and then I go in the store and now the ingredients then went up a little bit more. I definitely struggle with that. Like, I mean, what do I do? You know, but I'm learning now to just, once I go up to accommodate for that too. Yeah. You know, accommodate a few dollars more for if, Mm -hmm. you know, there is like, you know, the price does fluctuate. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I, I empathize with the people because I'm a consumer too. So it's like. So this is this is how I feel about this. And I know people probably going to fry me up like a good old chicken wing. And I'm okay with that. But this is how I feel. When I go into the store mm-hmm. and that price has gone up, my price has gone up. Uh-huh. Right? Because I get empathizing with people. And I get wanting to um, let people uh, enjoy, you know, your gifts and your talents. Um, but the, the light company and the water company, they've been enjoying my gifts and my talents too. And I don't like how they like it. Right. I don't like how they <laughs> enjoy it. It pisses me good and off. Cause they be like, oh girl, you working hard. Go ahead and give me uh-huh. some more of that. Uh-huh. You know, and they increase their prices. So it's frustrating when you have not done the increase right. and you aren't able to make your bills Mm -hmm. or you're just barely making it. If I cannot be happy or at peace or feel good about, you know, this transaction that Mm -hmm. we've made, then the product that I'm putting out is not the same either. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because I'm kind of feeling down Mm -hmm. about this because I know I've cheated myself. Mm -hmm. I know that I've undercharged myself. Mm -hmm. So when things go up, I go up. Most times, this is my thing. Mm-hmm. People will ask me for a price mm-hmm. or they will ask for a quote or tell me what they want. It they'll notice I'm not an immediate responder. Okay. Okay. I don't I don't work for um the ambulance. I I, I I'm not an ambulance driver. <laughs> so I ain't your first responder. Okay. I'm not coming right back at you. Mm-hmm. I will literally go right online mm-hmm. and look at what the butter is now. I'll I'll get right on Instacart. Mm-hmm. And see, let me see what the milk is now. Mm-hmm. Let me see what the buttermilk is now. Let me see what the flour is now. Mm-hmm. Let me see what this alcohol they want in this cake. Because the last time I made it, yesterday it was $43. I go back on there today, it's $45.99. Mm-hmm. So I got to increase. I got to add that now to my price. And after mm-hmm. I've done those prices, I'll get back with them. And I always let them know, okay, give me a second. But if they have already told me what they want and they're still trying to decide, then I'm doing my pricing in the meantime. I never give... No set prices. Okay. At no so time. you don't have like a, a price list? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. I'm never doing that. Okay. I'm, I'm never going to okay. do a price list because people will swear that you have changed your prices according to who they are. Ma'am, I don't True. even know you. I, <laughs> they, they'll be like, but she charged my sister. Uh-huh. And when I went on her website, yesterday it was... That that was yesterday, ma'am. The wind <laughs> blew, and the and the grocery store caught the wind, and they changed the price and added some tax. And then when I went on there, the wind flew back my way, and now I have to go <laughs> with that because other than that, I'm going to begin to hate what I do. Yeah, I'm going to lose my passion. I'm going to lose my love for it because I can no longer sustain myself. I can't mm-hmm. pay. If people don't understand, as an entrepreneur, I. Income, our money is so wishy washy. Yes, it is. It's so up and down. We can't even sometimes decide what we're going to do as far as like a house we want mm-hmm. or a car we want because we sometimes can't say, oh, well, I can afford this. It takes a long time sometimes mm-hmm. to save up and put up money so that you know, okay, I have a year worth of these payments. Now I can do this because we don't know what the up and the down and the fluctuation is going to be. So at the point of that is that is up, mm-hmm. 
when, I, when I'm operating, I need to make sure that it's worth it, that I can take care of myself when it's down. Mm-hmm. People don't know, like, I love entrepreneurs so much because you have to be brave. You got you got to be brave. You, you got to be strong. Mm. You understand? And then there's so many people that are always like against what you're about to do. Mm-hmm. You know, they will plant that seed of doubt in your head mm-hmm. time and time again. And then we have friends and family around us that don't understand mm-hmm. the moves we're making. You have to show them, and that's and that's hard. You know, mm-hmm. it's it. You know, you have to show them. Like I can't I can't tell you. You know, you stop talking and you just like, look, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Let me just go for it. Mm-hmm. I'll prove it to you later. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, it'll all make sense in the end, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it 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 works out, you know, for most. But, yeah, it, it's tough. This, this road is not, it's not for everybody either. It's not. It's, it's not, not for everybody, man. It's not for everybody. I would yeah. say um, if you don't know, if you don't feel it, it's not a passion, right? I would definitely say go for mm-hmm. entrepreneurship when you know that it's your passion. But you have people who just be like, I'm just tired of working for these people. Yeah, so I'm going so I'm I'm to, you know, I'm going to try something, do what she do did. That. Don't 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 you <laughs> don't dare. Do it. Because listen, this is not to look down on anybody, but in this world, I believe that God puts people in place from like the time that they are born, right? Mm -hmm. There are people that are the worker bees. Mm -hmm. There are people that are the leaders. Mm -hmm. You have people that are the queen bees. Now, this does not diminish the worth of the worker bee at all because you are essentially helping it all all come. Right. You're helping it all come together. And I've heard people say like people can live the best lives for a lot less than some other people you know, do like you, some people make almost no money, but live the happiest, most Uh peaceful lives. You know, there are people that love to help. There are people that love to build and they're okay. They don't even want all the big fancy stuff. They're okay with what they have. So everybody has a position, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I do believe that God put certain talents and gifts in us, right? And they're not to be ignored. Mm -hmm. So when you follow that passion, when you go after that and you do what you know is in you, it's the world is gonna make room for you. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Oh yes. my God, you made my heart. Yes. <laughs> it the your gift will make room. For it you. will make room for and you. And it and it happens along the way. A lot of people feel like, oh, you can prepare for this. No. You know, okay, maybe a little bit, but your gift literally makes room for you. So it's not like. Oh, you know, when you look down, you know that path is wide open. No. Mm-hmm. It's going to look like it's closed until the closer you get to it, it's going to continue to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The closer you get to, what you know, your next mark, it'll open up when you get there. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Your gift literally makes room for you. And, you know, you got to have, you got to have that passion. Because I'm telling to. you, that's you the payment to. right there. Absolutely. On, that's the payment on most days is like, because you'll never, ever be. I don't know. You know, I I feel like maybe one day you will, but most people don't get paid their worth. You know, mm. they don't get paid their worth. That passion makes you, it, it it's your motivation to keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, or the passion is your motivation to keep going until you are paid your worth. Absolutely. I'll, say that. I mean, I'll I put saw, it that way. Um, Taraji P. Henson, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and she was saying how they don't get paid their worth in Hollywood. And um, I thought about, you know, how she wasn't the only person that said Monique Mm -hmm. said it before Mm -hmm. her, right? But this is what I gather from that when it comes to us. Like I was saying, how people look at us and they will look at you and determine what you're worth. Monique said it long before Mm -hmm. Taraji said it, right? And when Monique said it, it was... She was complaining. Yeah, she's difficult. She's difficult. She's a problem. Mm-hmm. There was it was a whole thing about Monique because that's how people looked at her. Mm-hmm. That is what they looked at her as being worth. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people put your worth in your popularity. Mm-hmm. So now, when you're one of the popular ones mm-hmm. and everybody knows you and 
you've done this and that. People have no problem with paying you, Mm -hmm. right? And they figure everything that you have is already established. They will give to someone who is an heir, right, of Mm -hmm. something that is, you know, million dollar, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And they have no problem with giving it to you because you already got it. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to give it to the ones who they don't see have it because I'm not going to help you Mm -hmm. get to that point. I'm looking at regular schmegula, plain old you. I'm not paying you this. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving you that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm you're, you? not, you're not about to come up off of me, even though I know you're worth it. That's you know, what it is. Sometimes people know mm-hmm. that you're worth it. It's just, I don't mm-hmm. want to, yeah, I don't want to do that for you. I don't yeah. want to be the one to, the, mm, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the one to help you get that car this month. Uh-huh. I, <laughs> Not me. Like, I don't... Yeah, you know, I ain't even got that. I'm you know, not going to help and you And then when it. somebody else does it, it's like they come come along like mm-hmm. they, you know, were a part. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, then it's, I was I was supporting her for yeah. a long time like, no. from, from when she first came like, out. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. That wasn't you in the right. crowd. Uh-huh. That was you clutching your purse okay. when I came by. Uh-huh. You know, and it's really sad. Um, but I try my best to not even think about those who won't and those who don't, right? Mm-hmm. I try my best to not put that in my mind. I've seen so many posts on social media, people like, oh, perfect strangers will support you before your family. You know, this and that want to do this before, blah, 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 blah. I don't oh, even acknowledge it. I don't acknowledge it. It's like, for what? It's so negative. And at it this is point- It's almost like you're, you're trying, to, like you're- You're begging. You're try- yeah, you're trying to mm-hmm. get those people to mm-hmm. support you. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to make them feel bad with the about- post. Like no, I knew I loved you for a reason. <laughs> Listen, you're that is make them feel bad about. You're oh, trying to guilt them, them into yes. supporting you. Uh-uh. They don't support you. They don't. Mm. Feel, and listen, and it's okay. Yes, because people, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes people support you in, you know, at their capacity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I'm it might be a share on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Some people just, you know, flat out don't support you. Mm-hmm. But some people support you at their capacity. You know what I'm right. saying? And so you just... And I love that you, you know, said that because people don't understand. A lot of people have their own struggles. Yes. They are going through their own things. Mm-hmm. Some people are dealing with anxiety and depression and all kind of things. So they don't even know how mm-hmm. to support you at this mm-hmm. point when they're trying to figure out I'm their own to stuff. Survive. Exactly. I ain't, I ain't, I'm sorry. Exactly. I, I'm trying to survive for me and my kids. Exactly. And you know, my little family. I'm sorry, but you're the le- the least of my exactly. worries. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so that's where I'm at. Like people support, you know. People are going to support who they want to support. Yes. Mm-hmm. There are people who will flat out not support you, mm-hmm. you know, but then there are people who will love to support you. Absolutely. And they just can't, you know, and mm-hmm. then one day, you, you know, you never know. They exactly. may come around or they may not, but either exactly. way, you're going to be good. You know what There I mean? you go. If I'm good, I'm never, yeah, I'm never, I'm never talking about that. Like, I don't care. Exactly. Because at that point, when that becomes your focus, then you're losing. Mm -hmm. You're losing. You're not on the winning end of your own life because you're worried about the people who don't. No, you just cater to those who do. You know what I'm saying? And just as they cater to you. Because I look at it as, imagine, you know, it's your birthday and everybody's focused on you and everybody wants to make sure you have a good time, but you over here on the phone crying to the boyfriend that's already <laughs> threatening to leave you. And everybody like, well, bitch, will you come back over here and okay. eat with us? Like, we trying to celebrate you. Okay. But you crying about this one nigga. Like, no, no, that's <laughs> that's exactly how I look at it in this industry when people are worried about the haters. And mm-hmm. the, I hate that so much. I hate to hear even people talk about oh your haters. Girl, ain't nobody like, hating on you. you know you got... <laughs> Like how y'all know y'all got all these haters? Now I right. understand like you got some, you know, you know when a, yeah. you know when somebody don't like you. you right. Know what I'm saying? You know, okay, I know. I can feel your energy. I know you don't like me. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. But people who are always like talking about, like, you have, I literally, I look at people, they have so much going on in their mm. lives. And they're always talking about, you know, their haters and who didn't support them. And, you know, it's just like. Why are you giving them that that energy? I want to give them the Those satisfaction. Those people are so unhealed. Yeah. They have 
uh, that unhealed energy and they have a process that they need to go through themselves and they mm-hmm. haven't even, they don't realize it. Mm-hmm. And so though, to me, those people are also people that lack accountability mm-hmm. because right now your downfall or the fact that you're not making a business that you want to make relies on the people that you know don't support you. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, even with them handful of people that don't support you, it's still not going to get you to where you need right. to be. It's mm-hmm. actually when they're saying, oh, the people that don't know you are the people that come. Well, ain't that the, kind of the point of you being in business mm-hmm. is to get the people that don't know you mm-hmm. to come in and, and support you? Mm-hmm. Because if it's only your family members, ma'am, is I don't think you can... <laughs> like, like, is it really? Are you, re- you, you know? You're not really going to thrive. Your business, yeah. I, I promise you, my mama, my grandmama, and my sister can't get fat enough off my <laughs> off my stuff to make me for me to be able to pay my bills. Right. They can't. Absolutely. They can't eat my stuff every single day. I need the people that I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, you Yeah. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> I mean, sometimes we have to refocus ourselves and our energy. And that's that's with everything, and especially in this industry. You have to like reinvent yourself. Absolutely. Like you with your creations. And, Absolutely. You know what Always saying? be reinventing yourself because, you know, people are going, you know, we spoke about this earlier, but, you know, people are all, especially in social media now, people are looking for the next big trend and mm. thing to just copy it, mm-hmm. you know. You, you, you have to. Yeah. You have to keep reinventing yourself. Like, yeah. Once people catch up to that, like, oh, baby, go ahead. I'm already on to something else. Exactly. You know, like, that is so important. Like, mm-hmm. um, like when we were speaking the other day on the phone and I was saying about the recipes, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I I would get a lot of people like, girl, you giving up your recipe? And, or people would think that when I gave out recipes that it wasn't actually what I used, but mm-hmm. I was. I'm, I'm, I've always given out actually what I do. Mm-hmm. And people would be like, oh, but... They're going to take this into, and I've had people take my recipes, sell them as their own and all kind of stuff. Yes. And that's Ugh. okay. <laughs> like for me, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even, I don't, it's not okay as in I want you to do it, but it's okay as in I'm not sweating it, you know, yeah. because I truly believe that what's for me is for me. What's mm-hmm. for you is for you. Absolutely. If you needed to feed your family at that moment and taking that and doing that is what helped you feed your family at that moment, then you know what? God bless you. I hope he got. I hope he get, blesses you with a better idea the next time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It don't involve my shit. But, <laughs> but I'm get. I'm. I'm trying to get there. And, and listen, when I tell you, I it took there, me some yeah. time. Yeah, because I want to put my. I want to put a cookbook out, and I am. But it's like, girl, you already know. <laughs> you already know what they finna do. You know, yeah, so it's they like, do it all the time. Yeah. Listen, and I see so many times I've done things, and then I see somebody else do it, and then it like blows up. And in my mind, I never go, "Damn, why mine's in?" It's, it's never that for me. It's always like, "Yeah, so I did have a good idea." You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just worked better for someone who had the following yeah. than it did for me. So I'm excited that it worked for you. Like right now, and I'm working on getting into another another space where uh-huh. other things will work for me. So like for me, I move on so quickly. Mm-hmm. I, I always say my family had this running joke about me. No offense, boyfriend. Um, they would always <laughs> say that I changed my men like I changed my draws. And like oh, I'm constantly <laughs> moving on. Like I just move on, move on, move on. And I do, but that's just me in life in general. Uh-huh. I I just believe in moving on because yeah. I feel like there's so much to life, so much in this world, and a hundred years really ain't a lot of time. Mm. We say a hundred years like it's some great thing, but a hundred of anything is really not a lot. Hundred dollars mm-hmm. ain't a lot. You know, right. a lot of things is not a lot. You think a hundred cars is a lot till you walk on the dealership that only got a hundred cars. It's mm-hmm. like y'all ain't got no more than this. So a hundred is really not a lot. So I like to move on in areas of my career, mm-hmm. areas of the world, just areas of who I am mm-hmm. so that I can experience more, so that I can have a well-rounded life. So by the time you copy my my cookbook, I'm not even selling cookbooks no more, ma'am. I done moved on to selling seasonings. By the time you dub my season and change the label on a bottle, ma'am, I'm not even doing seasonings no more. I done moved on to the podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm constantly moving on. And so being a firm believer in what's being for me is just, it's just for me yes. and what is for someone else is for them. 
I just never worry mm-hmm. about what somebody else is going to do with anything that That's I have. Good. I don't. Like, I, I firmly believe in it. I don't, I don't think that we have a God that takes sides. Our God does not uh, work harder for the popular. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to say, well, you know what? She was she was doing this cookbook thing, and that was cute. And I love my baby, but my baby over here, this is Beyonce over here. Okay. So I, I'm going to let her go ahead and sell a million. God don't care. Mm-hmm. He don't care about your popularity, your clothes, your cars, your house, and nothing else. He loves us stripped down with nothing. When I'm nappy-headed and I ain't got no makeup, and I, he loved me a little bit more than this man. He didn't even tell me I'm pretty, even though I know I be looking a mess, and I be like, babe. You see my hair, he'd be like, oh, you got cutie naps, babe. I love your cute little naps. <laughs> and I'd be like, babe. But God literally loves that. He gave, mm-hmm. he gave it all to us. So I feel like he looks at you and he says, this is for you. And if that doesn't blow up or go viral, that's not the thing that he wants you viral for at that moment. you know. And if somebody else does, then that's what he wanted yeah. for them mm-hmm. at that moment. But for you... He has a plan, right? And we are so quick to just, this ain't work out. I'm going to give up. No, you keep just going. Wasn't your time, that, yes. just mm-hmm. that just wasn't your time. That just wasn't the plan mm-hmm. at and that moment. And you weren't ready. You weren't. Yeah. Nick, let me tell you something. If God had to give me this podcast, if God had to give me this podcast, I'm 40, I'll be 43 this year. I started to mature at 38. If he gave me this podcast at 37, you know how many people I would have cussed out on these microphones by now? <laughs> yeah, you weren't ready. I was not ready. Let me tell you something. These microphones would have been a vent session every time I came on here. <laughs> I would have cussed yes. out and blew out so many people because of the kind of person that I mm-hmm. was at the time. Everybody mama would have got it on this microphone right Really? You know, just, oh, I'm God. serious. Mm-hmm. I was... I had been going through so much. I didn't understand who I was. I was in a miserable place. I was in a miserable marriage. I was struggling. I was hurting for things. And and what hurted me the most, what I was most hurt about was the fact that nobody knew. Mm. Nobody knew. People looked at the makeup and the hair. So they didn't hair. pick up on your side. They didn't pick they up didn't hear on your side. They, oh, they, didn't, they didn't know the actual pain mm. that I was in. You know, the smiles that I would put out on social media, the jokes that I would tell that kept people laughing. Mm. They didn't know that I needed to read their comments and seeing them laughing to give me laughter at Mm -hmm. that moment because I was told the hell up. I was I was going through it Mm -hmm. and nobody knew. And then it bothered me that I felt like if I tell them then I'm taking away from what they're so proud of. Mm. You know, like I can't tell them what I'm going through because I'm going to take away from this moment, but I'm dying inside. And so that bothered me the most. So by the time I said to hell with this, I'm going to tell people what I'm going through. I look back at some of those videos and I cry because I'm hurting for the me I was then. Mm. And I was like, damn, you are hurt. Damn, you were through that going through it. Yes. And it is hard, Nick. Mm-hmm. It is very hard. And let me tell you, though, I think it's worse for entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is because when you're going through what you're going through and your income is already like up and down, mm-hmm. finances will add to everything. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. And then the minute you talk to somebody about what you're going through and you're already struggling financially, People swear that the answer to every problem you damn got to get a job. Get a job. (laughs) Yeah. Get a job. I will lose it on you if you do that. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had to, you know, and and we mentioned nine to fivers before, but but because that's all they know, Mm. you know, that, that, you know, that structure and, you know, it that's what they know. It mm-hmm. makes sense to them. Like they mm-hmm. they can't even fathom. Like you what you don't know what you're gonna make. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like they can't even fathom that. So that would be the answer because it's their answer. And that's why even like um, in relationships, 
don't get don't try to get questions from people who are not in relationships. People are always going to give you Ooh. their solution. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm if I'm a single woman and you're you know you're married, don't ask me because I'm going to give you my solution and I'm not hating on you and I'm not trying to sabotage you. Absolutely, you know. But I'm going to give you my solution I know and my solution right. is what makes sense to me in my head. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. And people so that's what that you yeah yeah you know I mean? I'm not I'm just giving you my solution and that's what it is is you got to ask somebody that's an entrepreneur you got to vent to somebody that is it you know what I'm saying it is rare to find someone you know my boyfriend he'll tell me like it was tough like my transition from West Palm Beach to Broward County it was tough and he was like well you can't get a job you you're not gonna be you know just thug it out until you know I'll. I got, you know, I got all the bills. Don't worry about it. But it was just something in me. Like, I didn't feel fulfilled. Like, I'm not doing, you know, I didn't I didn't even have, like, big bills to pay. You know, but it was just like, I'm not being able to produce like I'm so used to, you know, being, you know, being able to produce. And, you know, it also came from me um, just not really letting a man, you know, just, Letting a man be a man and mm. letting them, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for so long I had did it on my own. Oh, you know yourself. what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. now I got to like, but what if you don't, you know, <laughs> I know I trust you. I love you, but mm-hmm. I've been just so used to just doing it by myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so let me ask you a question. How long uh-huh. have you been in a relationship? Four years. Well, three and a half. Three and a half, and a half years. years. Yes. And it was very new to you for him to handle everything for you. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the thing that every girl wants, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you have been handling it, because, okay, I went through, I got divorced. I was married at 20, probably divorced by, what, 28. And so from 28 until... Yeah, 36. I'm doing this by myself. I'm dating people, mm-hmm. but you know, it it works. It did, you know, it's not yep. working. And so it's not like I wouldn't I, I in my mind I'm like, okay, I deserve this. I want this. But then to actually relinquish like that power, that that's t- that's tough. I am smiling so hard. <laughs> Listen, I'm smiling one because I identify. Girl, completely with it's you. Tough. It's like I've prayed for this, but now I don't even know how to do it with it because it's like, let me tell you, what? I'm a. This is a completely <laughs> transparent moment for me, and it's it's like kind of strange because my boyfriend is right here, uh-huh. and I'm about to talk about <laughs> you, babe. Um, but this is a transparent moment for me, I, and I don't think it's one that I've ever like said with my mouth. Um. There is a certain feeling of like an unworthiness sometimes that kind of like went through me. It was like, is he gonna get sick? Or like, it, it, sick of me? Am like, is I'm, am, am I, I gonna run him away? Am I gonna run him down? You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like having somebody just step in and say and mean it. Yes, genuinely, I got this. I'm not going. I am not going nowhere. I got you, you you know, like and you're fighting, you're fighting it, and and it's like I'm not, I'm I'm not not ready. Like it's like, and 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 then you don't, you're so used to doing things for other people, and you're also used to the fact that other people have worn you down, and you wonder, am I going to wear him down? Mm -hmm. Like how I felt like these other people was doing me, and not realizing that you're so worthy of it, and just your spirit is enough for them, like. It's, it's so surreal, like so Telling unreal you. to me because I'm telling you, Nick, I would be like, I was working for the school board at one point teaching bacon and pastry. And when things were going wrong and I feel like this job wasn't, you know, it wasn't working out and I knew that they wanted to get rid of me and I was stressing because I had stuff that I had to take care of. And in and, and my previous relationships, that's what it always was. I was you need to get a job. You need to get a goddamn job. You need to get a job. Fuck all that making cake shit. Get your ass a job. Mm-hmm. And it was like, damn. But when it came to him and he was like, babe, your purpose is bigger than that job. Mm. 
Your purpose is bigger than whatever is going on there. And then even when things started getting crazy and he was like, babe, I'll take care of this. I'll pay this. I'll pay that. And I was like, babe, I know I'm probably wearing you down. I'm going yeah. to find a job. And he was like, no, you need to focus on this journey. We're focusing on you. You want the podcast, babe? We're going to make that happen. And to know that I wasn't a burden mm -hmm. to him, to know that he was just genuinely there, wanted to see my light shine. It was like, whoa. But I would still feel like, nah, I still need to scramble around and get something else. Yeah. You know, like... Like a backup, like... Yes. <laughs> because I wasn't used to having anybody just take care of me and just to love me like that. And I would wonder, like, am I enough? Am I giving him enough? And I'm like, babe, I don't know how I can repay you. And he would be like, babe, you smile. That's enough for me. You make me laugh. That's enough for me. And I'll be like, I'm going to just keep smiling and laughing with you, boy. I'm going to make you laugh, boy. If I got to tickle you, I'm going to make you laugh. You know? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But oh, my God, I love this space for you. <laughs> Same. It's so beautiful. It is. It, is. it really is. You went through divorce. I did too. So yeah. it wears you out, man. It does. It wears you out. And so to have that rainbow after that storm, I don't know what yours was like, but I know mine, it was not easy. Oh, yeah. We were tearing shit up. <laughs> <laughs> it was not Hurricane easy. Hurricane Katrina. Okay. It wasn't easy, you know, but to, you know, finally get there and- have your rainbow and your little sunshine after all of that, man. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, your rainbow about to get a light brighter because I'm going to be your friend. Yeah. And, and we're going to work on some things. <laughs> Thank you. I need it. <laughs> like, I'm so happy that I got to meet yes. you, Nick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We ain't going to be able to get rid of me now. We're going we to be good friends. Okay. I love you. I need it. Period. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so good having you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank mm -hmm. you for... Reaching out. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely.